spirituals are very, very rich. It's a very crucial part of the American fabric of classical music, and that should never be forgotten because it is constantly living through people that are still writing with it in, in their ears today. Spirituals are always part of American music. Just the fact that it, it's withstood the test of time, and we don't even know how much time that is, but um, it's been around for hundreds of years. When I think about spirituals and the human experience, but I have to also be very specific. As a black person, thinking about those who created those spirituals along the way, because a lot of times the lid was put on, you were controlled, and having the permission to say, I'm singing, and it may sound good to you, and it may sound uh, entertaining, but I'm singing to express, I'm not okay with what's happening to my body. I'm not okay with what's happening in my situation. I do long for better. I do want for better. But I want you to hear the sounds, the moans, the groans, the cries, the wails, the emotive nature of individuals who were singing towards their freedom, singing towards their liberation, trying to be heard in a way and a shape where they didn't have political power, where they didn't have social mobility. But the one thing that we had was the agency of our voice. And that's what you're listening to when you hear the spiritual. You hear the embodiment of an individual, a human being, pleading to you to see them as a person. How do we as human beings care for one another, cry for one another, desire for one another, hope for one another? Well, within the black experience, We've had to do that musically. For me, to have the opportunity to sing spirituals on a concert, for me, it's keeping in tradition, because Marian Anderson did it, Paul Robeson did it, and they took it all over the world. And of course, there was the Fisk Jubilee Singers, which were quite, uh, quite amazing. Their story is, is phenomenal and painful and beautiful, um, if people don't know it. But... I'm glad that it's treated with respect. Beginning in 1871, the Fisk Jubilee Singers set out on tour to raise money for their alma mater, the Fisk Institute, in Nashville, Tennessee. As they traveled across the U.S. and around the world, the Jubilee Singers sang for audiences who had never heard spirituals before and were far removed from the experiences that gave birth to this music. One of the things that struck me about hearing the Fisk Jubilee Singers touring through Europe is the fact that, and I don't want to mince words, but the reality is that it was a European endeavor to enslave Black Africans. And so that this art form was brought back to a people that was considered less than, but brought in such a dignified way is huge. The group performed spirituals in choral arrangements, professionalizing what had been handed down as an oral tradition. Ella Shepard, one of the group's important early leaders and arrangers, remembered that to recall and learn of each other the slave songs demanded much mental labor, and to prepare them for public singing required much rehearsing. 
The incongruity of performing these deeply personal songs of lament for paying audiences was not lost on those original singers. Shepard wrote that the songs were associated with slavery and the dark past and represented the things to be forgotten. At the beginning of the 20th century, an early generation of composers, including towering figures like Harry Burley, Rosamond Johnson, and Florence Price, began to build a uniquely American body of classical music that drew on the sound of spirituals. A long and distinguished line of composers inspired by spirituals reaches back to Ella Shepard and the Jubilee Singers and continues through to the present day. Composer and educator Adolphus Hale Stork continues to be a prolific and creative contributor to contemporary music. I have a particular kinship with Adolphus as we were both born in Rochester, New York, and he seems to love viola as much as I do, having written many beautiful works for the instrument. His music draws from many influences and styles and ranges from solo to chamber music to symphonic, choral, and operatic works. He's currently working on a Requiem Cantata entitled A Knee on a Neck in Tribute to George Floyd. This particular excerpt that you're about to hear is a snippet from his variations on Swing Low Sweet Chariot. Written for the award-winning Marian Anderson String Quartet, the work is a joyful and rhythmically playful treatment of the familiar spiritual. Please enjoy this performance by Castle of Our Skins. Thank you. 